Yes. Okay, great. Everybody's now muted. Um, if you feel the spirit move you, you can always unmute and say whatever you want, but let's stay muted just so that we keep, keep it nice and quiet and clear, especially for the recording. So really excited to be with you guys tonight. My name's Eric Johnson. I'm the creator and CEO of Team Z. How many of you guys are familiar with Team Z already? A couple of you? Okay. So Team Z is a tool. It's built specifically for your business. It's going to help you be super efficient. There's basically three things you need to know about Team Z. One is that it helps you do all of your income producing activities in less than an hour a day. Okay. No planning, no dealing with notebooks or spreadsheets or, or pads of paper. Everything's in one place. You can do it in less than an hour a day. It's going to make you super efficient with your time. The second thing you need to know is that it is based purely on a concept of relationship marketing. It's based on building relationships, and I'll show you that in a second. And the third thing you need to know is that Teams is a system that will make sure that nobody ever falls through the cracks in your business ever again. Okay? So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you Teams. I'll show you how to set it up. I'll show you guys how, how to actually do a power hour, how to get everything done in less than an hour a day. I'll even teach you how to follow up like a pro. I'm going to do all, I'm going to cram it all in, Trina, okay? Try to. So it's going to feel like you're drinking out of a fire hose at times because I am going to cover a lot of ground quickly. I'm going to give you guys a lot of great information that you can apply. But before I jump into that, first I want to take you through a little bit on relationship marketing because you need to understand the philosophy. The Teamsy approach is different than what you've probably heard from other trainers in the industry. Okay, we focus on relationships first. Now the good news is the system I'm going to show you guys tonight actually works better. It works better than all the 1977 sales techniques you've been taught up till now. Trust me. Okay, let's jump in. Oh, the last thing is I will do a Q&A at the end. So don't worry. I'll answer all your questions at the end if, if you have any that last that long. Here we go. You see my presentation there now on the screen? Okay, so this is what I want to talk to you about first. How to leverage relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. That's probably better. I'll move the microphone a little closer. Okay, a little bit about my backstory for those of you guys who don't know me. I come from a background of coaching and consulting. I've been helping people build their business by relationship now for about 16 years. This has been my, my life's work. And um, I fell into network marketing by accident, probably like a lot of you. I found some products that really helped me. I lost a bunch of weight. I got healthy and um, was excited about it. And I just started sharing them naturally. When I, dis when I discovered what an amazing business opportunity it was, I kind of put on my coaching hat for myself and I realized that if I wanted to be successful at this business, I needed to go find the tools that I felt surely must exist that would help me leverage my time, be really efficient in my connecting and, and my relationship building. And um, the reason we're here today is because there was nothing out there, nothing in our industry, nothing based on relationships that was any good. So we built it. That's kind of how Teamsy came to be. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit more about relationship marketing. What is relationship marketing? A lot of people think that this just means selling stuff to your friends. How many of you guys thought that might be what it means? Just selling stuff to your friends. It's, it's absolutely not that. Relationship marketing is um, actually building relationships as our business strategy, okay? And the first concept I want you to get is this. It's a lead generation system. It's a lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of a business. This is not just a feel-good thing where we're, putting, we're hugging people and singing kumbaya with them. It's actually a system that will follow, and I'm going to teach you guys how to do that tonight. But you need to understand that it's a lead generation system because your business is not marketing great health supplements, tower gardens, or anything like that. It's really not. That's not your business. Your business, if I can get this thing to work, I'm already having my first failure. Having a lot of problems lately because Apple keeps updating the software and I'm not updating mine quick enough. Your business is lead generation. You're in the lead generation business. You are in the lead generation business. That means that you can be busy all day long, but if you're not doing work that will generate new business, new leads, then you're not working on your business today. And it's a mindset shift I want you guys to have. Now, the good news is, you don't have to be salesy or icky or anything to do that, okay? Which brings me to my next big principle, which is this. The paramount duty of a business is developing and deepening relationships, okay? Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. You'll hear people say that the, the duty of a business is to make money. 
And I'm here to tell you that if you look at your duty as de deepening and developing relationships, you'll make plenty of money. But it's a, it's a result of your relationship building. Now, what we do with relationships is we turn them into advocates by investing time and providing outstanding service. So over time, we turn them into advocates. So I want you guys to get your head around this right now. Traditionally in this business, we're taught, make a list of everybody you know, and start cold inviting everybody to learn about your business. Have you guys been taught this? It's the go for no concept, right? And out of the list, surely, you know, five or six of them will be interested. And what happens to the rest of them? Now they want to hide from you for the rest of your life, right? Because you're the network marketing person. And the way you went about it was all about you. It's the whole go for no thing. And the people who say no, it's like you throw them away like dead bodies. With relationship marketing, we turn those people into advocates. Nobody gets left behind. And I'm going to show you how this works. We invest time in them. We, we invest in those relationships. And some people are ready now. And some people just become our advocates and bring people to our business. It's pretty awesome, really. All right. Let's keep going. Next principle. Relationship marketing depends on trust. See, even if my presentation doesn't work, I know it by heart. There it goes. Relationship marketing depends on trust. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. Okay. Um, have you guys, have, has anyone come across a jerk in this business, in this industry? Maybe, maybe you had a friend who did. Here's the thing I want you guys to understand. Even if you haven't come across somebody who's not trustworthy or who's a jerk in this industry, your relationships have. And that's why they're often skeptical and guarded when we approach them. True. So it's important that we build trust. Trust makes the work fun. When there's a little bit of trust, you don't have to convince people or sell them. You can get right to helping them. Also, trust takes the ickiness away. How many of you are just your worst nightmare is being the icky salesperson? That's me too. Trust takes that away. If there's some trust, there's no ickiness for either side. Also, you get to go for yes. Instead of going for no, you're going for yes with relationship marketing. Okay. So how do you build trust? How do you actually go about it in a systemized way? I'll take you through the four essential ingredients really quickly. Okay. Get your pens out. If you guys aren't taking notes, you'll want these. One is chemistry. Number one is chemistry. Number two, character. Character. Number three is competence, competence. And number four is consistency, chemistry, character, competence, consistency. All right. Let's break these down really quick. Let's start with chemistry. Chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? This one, you, should, you guys probably get this one pretty quickly. But here's my point to this. It's pretty hard to do business with someone you don't like. Isn't that true? Yeah. So we need to find common ground. And, and if you look around social media, I mean, any one of you guys can go to your Facebook feed right now, and you'll see a lot of people are spending time finding the opposite. They're, they're pointing out where they're different or where they differ from others. You got to find common ground as a business owner. You need to find ways to relate to people, right? So think about that. It's hard to do business with someone you don't like. The other piece of the puzzle that's kind of cool is that 87% of Americans, I know we've got a couple Canadians up there. You guys probably kind of go the same way. But 87% of Americans would prefer to do business with a friend. So it goes both ways. We don't like doing business with people we don't like, and we prefer to do business with friends. You hear my computer barking at me? It doesn't like what the buttons I'm pushing. Number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. Okay, character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. People think that character is something they have. Character is not something you have. Character is something you do. Okay, character is something you do. You need to be demonstrating character. And if you're like me, because I make the same mistake all the time, and if somebody's questioning my character, I get all twisted about that. But if you're not demonstrating your care, they should be questioning your character. You've got to remember, it's something that you do. Okay. Number three is competence. How did I mess this up? Come on, baby. You can do it. 
I think I need a new Mac. What do you think? Any excuse to buy a new Apple product? My wife right now is rolling her eyes in another room in the house. She doesn't even know why. <laughs> it's only a year old. But you know, care, number three, competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Okay, competence is when you demonstrate you are good at what you do and you are a business person. I need to know, can you help me? Can you help me get healthy? Can you help me get off these high blood pressure medications? Can you help me get, right? Are these things you guys are competent enough to help me with? Do you know how to help me with that? And then once you do, uh, do I feel like you can mentor me in this business? I need to know, are you competent before I can trust you to join your team? Now, anybody new on the call? Any new people? Okay. Have you ever been told as a new person, it's okay if you're new, just fake it till you make it. You ever hear someone say that? Okay. So that's been said again since the seventies. There's nothing wrong with that. I've been alive since the seventies, <laughs> right? But I've grown and so do our, our sales techniques need to grow too. Don't fake it. Don't fake it. Okay. You don't need to be fake ever. You need to be authentic and genuine. And you guys need to understand that if you do something even small that violates trust with a relationship, getting that, rebuilding that trust takes so much energy and effort. And most of what's being taught in our industry, if you do any of it, even a little bit, will violate trust with people because it's just not on the up and up. It's just not the way people operate anymore. So you need to not fake it. Now here's the good news. If you're new, you don't need to. You just need to lean into the competence of your team. You let people know, hey, you know what? I'm brand new, but I am part of one of the best teams in this organization. And my upline has all the experience. They're one text message away from any answer you need. You're plugging into the right team. The training that we'll do together as we build a business is unbelievable. They even bring the Teamsy guy in for trainings. This is how good this organization is right? So don't fake it. Lean into your upline. If you're, if you're bringing new people onto your team and you do have that competence, encourage them to lean into you, to lean into your competence. Okay. Get on three ways with you, whatever they need to do until they have it themselves. Um, and then they can demonstrate it themselves as they go. Okay. Don't fake it. All right. Principle here. The principle here is that I need to update my software is this, people only care about three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? These are the three things they care about when doing business with you. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Now, I don't have time to go deep into that principle, but write it down because I want you to know that when you have objections in your business, the objections come from one or a combination of these questions that they don't know the answer to all objections. Now, are they thinking this consciously? No, it's more of a subconscious, heartfelt questioning. But as you build trust and deepen a relationship with somebody, you will answer these questions for them and they will no longer have objections. I was shared a story last night. This actually happened to me in my, in my network marketing business a few times where people said to me, Eric, uh, after we talked about our goal, you know, their goals, what they wanted to do health wise, they would say, um, here, they'd text me a photograph of the front and back of their credit card. Just texted it to me and just said, just order whatever you think I need to get to my goals. And then, um, you know, let me know what I need to do. And that is crazy, isn't it? In some way, but that's the opposite of objections. That's when you've built a relationship that has rock solid trust. Make sense. Okay. So not everybody will get there. The people will get there at different times over time. People that you barely know will take a long time to build trust. Some people that you know already, um, you'll be amazed how quickly you can do this if you, if you approach it the right way. Okay, number four, consistency. Consistency. Here's your principle. People respect consistency. Come on, computer, please, please. You're killing me. Darn it. All right. We're just going to have to do it this way. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. You won't get to see my cool animations or anything like that. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. Okay. What does this mean? Have you guys ever been told that you're inspiring? Has anyone ever told you that you're an inspiration to them? Well, you're the new person. That's why you're shaking your head. Just give it a little time. Okay. 
<laughs> it'll happen. It'll happen. And then you, you'll go, me? I'm inspiring? I put my pants on backwards this morning. It was dark, right? Um, how many of you guys do that? You know how I discover sometimes my pants are on backwards? Is when I put my cell phone in my front pocket and it hits the floor. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sharing a little too much. All right, it's all good. But people respect consistency and desire it for themselves. That's why they find normal people inspiring because they see you doing things consistently. The consistency is so impressive. How many of you guys have kids? Any parents? Everybody's parent, just about, right? Is it important to be consistent to build trust with your children? Yeah, so you get this already. Consistency is the most important thing, okay? People, people not only respect it, it builds trust, but... It has a little side bonus. They want to be near it. So it attracts people to you in your team. It attracts people to your tribe. They want to be like you. Here's a book I want to, I want to recommend you, to you guys. It's called Influence, The Psychology of, of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. If you haven't read that one, add it to your reading list. That's what it looks like. Okay, Influence. So awesome. This, this principle, by the way, is from the book. So great. This book was written, man, I don't even know how long. I've had my copy for 10 years now. It was written in 1984. Do you know he talks about the concept of social proof? Have you guys heard that now? 1984. Man, makes me old, makes me feel old. All right. Um, I wasn't really paying attention to this stuff in 1984. I'm glad he was. All right, consistency. Read this book. Got it. You guys got that title? Okay. So are you consistent, guys? Are you consistent with, how many of you guys are consistent products of your products? You use your products, you have the lifestyle, and you live it. And people know that you do it, <laughs> right? How many of you guys consistently share your story and your journey on social media? Well, I hope to see more hands next time you bring me in here, Trina. That's part of it, guys. You gotta start sharing your story. You gotta start sharing your journey, right? Usually people say, I do that. Okay, great. The real question is, are you as consistent with your relationships? Okay, with your relationships. Are you as consistent reaching out to people, connecting with people, as you are about, say, posting on social media? Okay. Here's the principle. People won't believe you till they see you. And what do I mean by this? So many people get into this business and they start telling their story, which is, by the way, for those of you guys who didn't raise your hands, Trina will talk to you after the call. <laughs> You got to start sharing your story on social media. People need what you have. People need help, but they don't, they're not going to need, know they need it until they know your story, share your story and start sharing. And then people will, what will happen is this. People will start watching you and enjoying it like a TV show. Right. And some people will, the people you're connected to will, some of them will go, yeah, I want to, I want to learn more, but most people will just watch you. They're just watching, see what you do, see if you mean it, see what you achieve. And they don't know that you actually want them to join you because why they haven't heard from you since maybe high school. Does that make sense? You can post your story all day and it's great, but until they hear from you, they don't know you mean them. Make sense. So you need to be connecting with people. You need to remember that relationship building is a contact sport. That means you need to actually be in contact with people to build relationships with them. Okay. Here's the most important principle I'm going to share with you tonight. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Okay, let me just give you a quick example on this and then we'll jump into TMZ and I'll really get a chance to blow your mind. How many of you guys, do I have one here? No, I don't. How many of you guys have ever received a really great card? Like, um, you know, like a card from somebody you love and they wrote a beautiful message in it and it brought tears to your eyes and warmed your heart. Anyone? How many of you, how many of you guys are married? Hopefully it's the same hands or someone's in trouble tonight. When you get that card, isn't it amazing how a card with a heartfelt sentiment can really move you emotionally. Have you guys noticed that? Now, after you read a card like that, and you're like, wow, that was really great. Then what do you do? How many of you are able to just crumble that card up and throw it in the trash can? Does anyone throw those away? Is it, do you guys, are you like me? Do you find it very hard to throw away those great cards? Yeah. 
most people don't throw them away. Most people save them forever. By the way, just a little side note. If you write people cards, they'll save them forever in case you haven't done that in your business. Okay. People will save them forever. In fact, when people pass away, what's treasured most by the family? Their cards and correspondence and letters, right? Um, often you'll find the one that meant the most in someone's Bible. It's, like an, it's amazing how deep a connection can be made by writing somebody a message. Now, here's another question for you. How many of you guys have ever received one of these? This is a happy birthday postcard. Have you ever gotten one of these? This one is from my State Farm insurance guy. Sometimes we get one, my dog gets one from the vet. Dog, my dog doesn't even read, right? <laughs> well, I don't know if she reads. I don't think she can read. She doesn't talk, so she might be able to read. I don't know. Do you, do you guys ever get one of these? Does this, go, does this get saved forever in the special place? Or, does this, or do you throw this right away, no problem? This goes right in the trash, right? Why does this have no value? It's a happy birthday card. It even looks like it has handwriting in it, right? This has no value because it took no time. He invested zero time in this, so it doesn't mean anything. The same reason why somebody can buy a $10 card and just write happy birthday in it, and it, doesn't, it still has no value. Have you ever noticed that? Somebody buys you a beautiful card, but they don't write anything in it, it still doesn't have any value. You won't keep it, right? The time invested is where the value is. It's the most important thing we have. It's the most valuable thing we have is time invested. And if you, want to, if you want to make an impact in a relationship, you have to invest time in that person. Now, do you need to write them a letter every time you want to connect? No. But there is a big difference between sending a message, personal, one-on-one, -on -one, or posting on social media. Make sense? Or sending a blast email. Oh my gosh, please, please. I know, I know because I have to use email marketing for my business and it's terrible. The response rate is terrible and people hate getting emails. And if I had everybody on Facebook, I would just message you all directly. <laughs> okay, so you get the idea. Now, I'm gonna show you guys how with Teamsy, you can re actually reach out and connect, let's say with 20 people a day, every day in less than 15 minutes. How cool would that be? I'll show you that in a second. All right, one more slide and then we jump right into um, Teamsy. This is what you need. You gotta have a system. I've taught you some of the concepts tonight. I know you guys like those, but you have to have a system that helps you stay in contact with all your relationships. You need to know when to contact them without having to do excessive planning and thinking, right? You need to know what to say. So you don't get stuck trying to think of, oh my gosh, what am I gonna say to this person? And then you don't do any work. How many of you guys, have, that's happened to you? Also, you wanna make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. And what happens all too often is we have somebody, we've worked so hard to cultivate, they're interested. And then after we followed up a little bit, they just, they fizzle out and we think, okay, well, we'll connect with them later. Next thing you know, they're in the business on someone else's team. Has that ever happened to you guys? Oh my gosh, it's heartbreaking. It happens all the time. It's because you didn't have a system to make sure they didn't fall through the cracks. Make sense? All right, so let's jump in. I'll show you Teamsy. Has this been helpful? going through some of these concepts, it's hugely important because you gotta shift your thinking and put, the, put the, the value on the relationships first. The relationship's more important than the sale, the relationship's more important than the recruit. And people can feel the difference. Okay, where's Teamsy? That's Facebook, but I have Teamsy right here. There we go. Okay, so now you're looking at Teamsy. This is the specifically designed Juice Plus version. By the way, if you guys aren't, aren't using Teamsy, you need to go to teamsy.com and get a free trial. It's 30 days, full access, free, no credit card required. Just go use it, okay? You'll love it. All right, so if you don't have a free trial, get it started. So here's my dashboard. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up. When you sign up for a free trial, the first thing that you'll do is you'll drop into the setup wizard to help you set it up. And I'm gonna go to the setup wizard right now by going to this little menu on the top right. All right, so let's go through this. In the setup wizard, we're gonna do three things. We'll set your income goal. We're gonna help you create a powerful why to keep you motivated. And then we'll get all your contacts into Teamsy so you're organized in one place. 
No more pads of paper, no more shoe boxes full of sticky notes. Oh my gosh, you guys. Or spreadsheets you never update <laughs> or rarely update. Let me just give you, I'll take away the never. My, my wife always says, don't say never, rarely update. How's that? All right, let's do it. Set an income goal. First thing we're gonna do is put an income goal in here. Now, what is your income goal for 12 months from now? Where do you wanna be? I put $150,000 as my income goal for 12 months, okay? So whatever your number is, put it in here. But I recommend you make it a decent size. Okay, make it a decent size because Team Z's gonna help you do this pretty easily. So I put in $150,000, I'm gonna click continue. So now Team Z has crunched the numbers and it's telling me that I need to connect with 4,348 people over the next 12 months. How many of you guys think that's a lot of people? That's a lot of people. I grew up in a town with less people than that. But, um, and if I did this in, in one year, I'd be mayor. <laughs> right? But here's the thing. It was a big goal. How many of you think $150,000 in one year is, is, is pretty aggressive? Yeah, it's aggressive. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. Next page will break this down for me. Because if you need to eat an elephant, you do it how? One bite at a time, right? The next page breaks it down for me into three groups, prospects, customers, and distributors. Then it breaks it down monthly, weekly, yearly. I'm sorry, monthly, weekly, daily. So I have a daily target. That goal, $150,000, which was 4,348 people, actually breaks down to 19 a day. And that's with weekends off. Not bad, right? 19 a day. Nine prospects, six customers, and four distributors on my team. Now, if you're brand new, you might do all 19 as prospects because you don't have a team yet. But as you have a team, that's how it would break down. Okay, so if you're brand new, and you can change these, by the way, to anything you want. That's just the suggestion. Let's make it an even 10. That way my goal is 20 instead of 19. Okay, so again, if you're new, you can take this four from distributors, if you have none, and put it over here and make your prospects 14. Make sense? All right, but this is the amount of activity I need to do, which is connecting with 20 people. And I'm going to show you that that's 15 minutes work. In a second, it's gonna blow your mind. Okay, so the next thing is, so these are connects. Just really quick, these are connects. I'm gonna connect with my prospects, my customers, and my distributors. What does that mean? It means I'm just gonna say hello. My goal is not to sell them or recruit them or anything, it's just to connect. And uh, I call it the make someone's day mindset. My mindset is just to connect and make their day. Okay? When's the last time somebody reached out to you just to make your day? And how awesome was that? Daily invites, this goal here, these are invites. So an invite is when I'm talking to somebody about the business, where I'm gonna say, hey, let's have coffee, or let's jump on a three-way call, or I've got a virtual event coming up, would you like to tune in? Or I've got a real live event, would you like to come with me, right? Or would you like to try some products? These are invites where I'm talking about the business. My goal is out of these 20 conversations I'm gonna start, is that I'll have opportunities for three invites. So I'm inviting people when they've shown interest. This is, how I'm, this is how I maintain my relationships and I go for yes and I don't alienate or damage any of my relationships along the way. Make sense? Okay, and then ads. These are new people that I'm putting on my list every day. I'm just meeting new people, putting them on my list, trying to rack my brains about people I haven't put on my list yet so that I'm always putting fresh water into my business. Make sense? And you can set them and you can adjust them. Okay, next. So anything, um, once you have those the way you want them, you just, uh, when you continue, it will set up your dashboard based on your personal goals. Okay, so each of you will have a customized dashboard based on your goals. By the way, you can change those anytime too. Finding your why. Okay, so I just need to talk to you a little bit about this because this is something I'm very passionate about. I'm gonna try not to go off on a huge tangent on it, but I have to go through this. My, um, my engineers, are always telling me, Eric, if you took the my why part out of the setup wizard, we could improve setup time by 20 minutes. Now I want you guys to know why that 20 minutes is so important. Because one out of two people in this business will quit in their first year. Some of you have experienced that, right? With people you brought on. One out of two on average quit in their first year. They just quit. Now, why do you think people quit? Now, before you come up with all the things that you've thought up on why people quit, I'll just tell you something. Our default setting as human beings is quit. That's what we do first. We take the path of least resistance. 
That's part of our survival instinct. We just quit. So when things are tough, we quit. When there's no results right away, we quit. When it takes work, we quit. Why? Because it's easier. We will stick to something and succeed only if we have a really important reason to do so. How many of you guys feel like there's things that in this life that you would actually give your life to defend? You have things like that, right? Which is, that's a pretty intense emotion. How many of you guys would, you know, give your life to protect your car from being destroyed? Or something like that. Not at all, right? It's just a different, because you don't have a reason to. You have to understand the why power is everything in this business. And if you don't figure out your why, and the truth is it's not that hard. I'm going to show you it's actually quite easy. The, you already know the why. It's in your heart. You just need to get it up to your head because your head, unfortunately, runs your life, not your heart. You have to get your why up to your head so that you can actually take control of what you're doing and be successful. If you don't, you will be the statistic that quits. I'm here to tell you right now, and the same is true for everybody you work so hard to bring onto your team. If they won't take 20 minutes to go through this process, you can lead them through it. I'm going to lead you through it right now. They'll quit. It's also a way to identify, and I know Trina, and I, and I know Trina's in my boot camp, and I saw, um, I saw a couple people that are in the new boot camp that just started this week, which is great. We haven't gotten there yet. You guys will get there. One of the things that I'll teach you is that if someone's unwilling to work on their why, then that's your first sign that they're not a builder even if they say they are, they're going to fizzle out. So you don't have to invest a lot of time in them. <laughs> all right, let me take you through the process. You don't need to go to a sweat lodge and do all kinds of weird um, hippy dippy stuff to figure this out, guys. It's just really just asking yourself some questions. Okay. And I'm going to take you through my story as an example. Some of you guys know my story. Um, I was for a while, I was a beach body coach and I loved it. And the reason why the first question here is why did you become a distributor? The reason why I became a beach body coach was because with their programs, I lost 60 pounds and which was completely life changing. And I was younger in my, I was younger in my forties than I was in my twenties, if that makes sense. And I was excited. People were asking me about it all the time. What are you doing? You look great. And I would tell them. And because I was well-connected in my business, in my consulting and coaching business, uh, it was a lot of people. <laughs> it was like 10 people a day would ask me what I'm doing and I would tell them to go to Beachbody. Finally, my wife said, Eric, just go be a distributor so that you can get paid for that. So I did. Made sense. I did it. I didn't have lofty goals. I didn't want to change the industry or anything like that yet. I just thought, okay. So what do you hope to accomplish? Next question, what do you hope to accomplish? I just wanted to make $500 a month extra money. That's it. Anybody have a goal like that? Maybe you have a goal like that now. I just wanted a little bit of extra money, 500 bucks a month. That's what I hope to accomplish. Next question, why is that important to you? Why is that important to you? Because I wanted, not because I wanted to go out and spend money or anything, I just wanted to save it. I wanted to put $500 a month in the bank. How many of you guys like putting money in the bank is so cathartic, right? So just to give you a little background on this, um, I told you I come from the coaching industry. I worked specifically with real estate agents, mostly like 90% real estate agents, which was the business to be in because the real estate market got bigger and better every year, didn't it? I mean, it was awesome. It was like, boom, boom, boom. Every year it was just like, it was great. In California, Every single human being in California over the age of 18 was a real estate agent at one moment. Seriously. I mean, you'd be like getting a drink at a bar and going, I'm thinking about selling my house. And the bartender would go, I'm an agent. It was just crazy. And then what happened? The Great Recession came. In the U.S., real estate disappeared. It disappeared. The only, the only way we even stayed in business, thank God bless you guys in Canada for not messing up your mortgage industry so badly. We went and started coaching people in Canada for a while to try to survive because <laughs> there was no business in the United States. It was really scary. Anyways, long story short, I lost my job. Everybody I knew lost their job and um, it was very scary. Um, we were blessed. I, we made it through the recession. We made it by our fingernails, but we used up our savings like in the first 60 days when I didn't have a job. Our, all our savings was gone 
and we no longer were able to save. We were just living check, check to check. Anybody relate to that? And so even after the recession, when the economy kind of came back and I was able to go back to my original company at a better position, a higher salary, we still weren't able to save. We still weren't able to save a penny. And at the point when I was looking at network marketing, I had not saved any money, guys, in almost seven years. None. I have four kids. It was like just being naked all the time, you know? And if you, and if you do your math on your budget and all that, like I had, I knew that if I lost my employment again, which was a legitimate fear because I'd been laid off so easy when times were rough, right? Was that we were 60 days from losing everything we owned. And I think more people live in that reality than we even want to admit, right? I wanted to save $500 a month for so many deep reasons. Nobody bothered to ask me, but I knew when I said, I want to put that $500 in the month, it, a month in the bank, it was a big deal. Does that make sense? And in some way, it was a tiny little hedge against all of those fears and anxieties that are just kind of in the back of your mind as you're going through life. All right. So I just want you guys to know, I'm getting deep already in my mind, just asking these questions. And a minute ago, I was just like, okay, sign me up, whatever. Now, the next question is, what would achieving this mean for you and your family? So in my case, it was saving $500 a month. What would that, what would achieving that mean for my family and me? And um, honestly, the, the real thing that I wanted to do more than anything was to buy a new home for my family. I wanted to buy a new home for us. We had outgrown our home. We were upside down. At the time I wrote this, these goals, we were upside down on our mortgage more than six figures um, because of the economy change. I, our home was so crowded with children and dogs and toys I don't know what's more takes up more space. I think the toys take up more space than the children, <laughs> for sure. You guys can relate to that. There was nowhere to move. We were on top of each other. I just wanted to get a new house for us. I dreamt of having a little more space and you know that sort of thing. So I'm thinking about our dream home now, five minutes into this, and, and I'm starting to get excited about the business. Does this make sense? The next question, why is that meaningful? How does this make you feel? Why is that meaningful? How does this make you feel? I'm telling you guys my story as an example. Obviously, you've got to go through this yourself and figure out what it is that's important for you. But as I started thinking about why is the goal to buy a home meaningful, that's when I realized, first of all, I didn't like this last question. Anyone, I mean, like the deep questions, they're hard. I don't like doing that stuff. But as I really thought about it, I, I didn't really feel like buying the home was a deep goal but I felt like it was, symbolic, it was symbolic of something deeper, right? Something that I hadn't allowed myself to think of. And as I started thinking about it, here's what I realized. It wasn't the home per se that I needed. It was the life with my family that I was missing. I was not part of my family. I provided for them, but I wasn't there. I'd get up in the morning to, for work and I would kiss my kids goodbye in their pajamas. You know, bye daddy and have a great day. And I'd go to work. I would work. I was really good at my job. I mean, really proud of my, of my career and what I'd accomplished. And I liked the status of it. And I would work, 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 work. I'd come home. My kids were already done having dinner without me, getting ready for bed. And I'd put them to bed. That was my job. Good morning and good night. And my son at the time, who was just turning five, he, um, you know, as parents, how many of you guys have multiple kids and you get their names mixed up all the time, including the dog's name sometimes? Yeah, that's, that's me too. That's okay for us. But when your child can't get your name straight, that's when you know you're not around enough. And my son would call me grandma or he would call me the name of his teacher or he would mess up. He would not get daddy until like the third try. And I was like, man, I'm not around this kid enough. I'm missing it. I'm missing it. And I had, I, I'm, the, I'm the kind of person that some of you guys can relate to this. I've wanted to be a dad since I was a kid. Like I couldn't wait to have my own kids and be a dad. And here I am, not even there. So going through this process, I had some big aha moments come through. And I was able to write my very first why statement. Now, I ask you these questions in the Teamsy Setup Wizard to get you thinking about this. Because maybe you just won't take 10 minutes to think about this on your own, but you just might as you're setting this up. Make sense? And this is a really important process. You need to do this at least once a year. Now, I get down to this last box, my why, and this is where you put in your why statement. Now I put in mine, the sample text 
Am I, wait, I'm not actually sharing this with you. I'm just telling you about it. Let me hit the share screen button. <laughs> this last box where it says my why, this is where you create your why statement. Now, my why statement that I wrote, oh my gosh, you guys, you know what's mind blowing about this? This, I was just talking to my wife about this. This was less than three years ago that I wrote this why. Everything that's happened to me and for me in my life has been in the last two and a half years. It's crazy. I wrote this down though that day to create a life where I never have to worry about money again. I enjoy quality time with my family and I'm present for my children on a daily basis. I'm healthy and full of energy. This was the why word for word that I wrote down that day. And I wanted to be free from that worry. Nobody can fire me if I own the company, right? I wanted to be with my family, my children every single day, healthy and excited about life, full of energy. I wrote this why down. Guys, and when I wrote this down, by the way, whatever you write in this box, when you hit continue, it saves to your dashboard of Teamsy so you can see it every day. You can see it every day to keep you motivated. The why confronts you when you don't feel like doing it today. How many of you guys have had those days? Like, I don't feel like reaching out to people today. If you don't, if you don't admit to that, then there's something wrong with you. You're not a normal person. The why confronts you. You have to decide. Now, I'm going to show you right now how to do it in Teamsy. Literally 20, 30 minutes, you're going to get everything done. Now, think about this. If you could do everything you need to do in 20 or 30 minutes and you still don't feel like doing it, now you have to be confronted with this. Do you want to take the next 20 or 30 minutes and get it done and live out your why? Or do you want to skip it and stay stuck where you're at now with all your fears and anxieties and worries? The why confronts you and helps you get it done more often than you would on your own. And it will help drive you through the three biggest dangers to your business procrastination. I know you guys are looking at me like, he's not talking to me, he's talking to her. <laughs> Lack of visible results. That happens sometimes, right? Makes you want to stop. Boredom. Those are the three biggest threats to your business. Not the economy, not who the president is. None of that matters. Those are the three things procrastination, lack of visible results, and boredom. Your why will push you through those. You guys would be amazed how you are three feet from gold all the time. All the time. If I would tell you some stories if I had more time, but I know I'm already spending too much time. Let me just tell you one thing that happened for me. When I wrote this, my why down, it changed everything. I was so excited for my business now because I knew what I was going to achieve. I left my career within three months. <clears throat> And I, I came home full time to work on my business. Guess what though? I told you we were in a small house and there was nowhere to work. So what did I do? So somebody, Trina, do you know the story about my shed? Did I ever tell you this story? I went to Home Depot and I bought a shed. Like a, you know, like the kind you put your lawnmower in? And I had it dropped in my backyard. I ran an extension cord out to it. And I started building my business in a shed on the dirt in my backyard. And it was hot. And I had lots of spiders dropping on me in the middle of webinars. Crazy, right? I was out there with the peppermint oil, constantly spraying the peppermint oil. Look, I have a picture I'm gonna share, you, share with you real quick. This is me in my shed quarters. Two years ago, can you believe it? Started, and in the back on the board, you can see as a note for my idea of a thing called Teamsy. You see that on that whiteboard in the back. That's my partner, Mike Lopez, one of my partners with Teamsy. Um, who was my boss for 15 years at my old job. Pretty awesome. I love that. I found that picture recently, the shed quarters. You got to do the why. You got to do it. Don't skip this. Now, one more little tip. Um, this is a tip I, do, I give my advanced people in boot camp, which is take the why, go one step further, write it down on a piece of paper, and I want you to tape it to the mirror where you brush your teeth so you can see it twice a day. Okay. Trust me, that will help you. Or on the dashboard of your car, Trina's telling me, give you all, don't, don't hold back, give it all to you. Dashboard of your car is a great place to put it to. Some place where you're gonna see it all the time. Just don't read it while you're driving. Read it at stop signs, stop lights. You shouldn't have to read it. If you just look at it, you know it's there, you know what it means. Okay, where am I? Teamsy, where'd you go? All right, so let's do this. So once you save this, whatever you put here, you know, whatever you type in this box, you hit continue. 
it'll be on your dashboard. Last thing you're gonna do is get everything, all your um, contacts imported into Teams -y, so you have them in one place. If you've, if you've already got a business, a Juice Plus business, you're gonna go to your back office and get your downline and your customers and import those in. If you're new, you don't have to do that step. You go right to the next list, which is your Facebook friends. Get all your Facebook friends imported into Teams. -y. These are little videos that help you do it, okay? Um, there's actually a complete, I'm gonna skip the wizard and show you. There's a complete um, help center in Teams -y that you can click. And there's even more FAQs and instructions and videos and things that you can get help with all of that setup stuff. The setup is pretty darn easy, but if you run into any trouble, you guys notice this little help button floating around on the bottom? Click that at any time and send us a message and our team will help you. So if you can't find it yourself and you're just like, I'm, I'm like you, Eric, I'm not a tech person. I have no idea what I'm doing. We'll help you. Can you guys tell that I'm not a tech person? Did you see how much I struggled with the darn um, PowerPoint? Oh my gosh, I'm not a tech person. That's why I built Teamsy to make my life easier. Okay, so now we've got everything set up. Oh, there's one more step I didn't show you to set up and then we're ready to crush our power hour. This is an important step. If you do a bulk import, let's say like your Facebook friends, when you bring it in to Teamsy, Teamsy is going to automatically take you to the team page. Right here, I'm going to go there. The team page is where your whole, all your contacts live. See, there's your list of everybody. It goes on forever. It's going to take you there, and it's going to drop it down in rank mode, which looks like this. I'm going to turn it on right now. Rank mode shows everybody's star ranking. And so what's really important in Teamsy is we rank all our relationships on a five-star scale, just like you rank something on Netflix or on Amazon, right? You guys get that. Five stars is awesome. One star is not awesome, <laughs> right? Okay, this is important because in relationship marketing, you need to spend more time with the best people. Okay, you need to spend more time with the best people. So you're gonna talk to them more often. Now what you do is you go down your list and everybody's gonna automatically be a three star to start and you're gonna look for the people you like or the people you think might be interested, and you're gonna, you're gonna promote them up to four and five stars, okay? And then once you set this up once, Teamsy will automatically create your connect list every day forever. You never have to do any planning, okay? So let me just take you through what these um, star ratings do. A five star is somebody most likely to become a customer or distributor, or they're an existing customer or distributor that's a rock star. Five star people come up on your up next list to connect just to say hello every 30 days, every 30 days they come up, right? Your friends, your close friends and family will be five stars too. You have, you'll have the best relationship you've ever had with them. <laughs> Teams will tell you to go say hello. Four star people, there's somebody that's likely to become a customer or distributor with a little bit of nurturing. They show up on your list every 60 days, okay? Three stars could go either way, you don't really know. Most of the people you know will be a three star and they show up every 90 days, every 90 days. So this keeps you in touch, but it also keeps you from overdoing it and being annoying. Make sense? Two stars are getting colder. They're every 120 days. You guys with me? You see how this works? Okay. So once you've set this up one time, and I, you know, some of you guys are like, oh, that's going to take me a little bit of time to do. No big deal. Get a nice adult beverage, put on some smooth jazz, get it done. If you guys moved into your dream home, how many of you guys have a dream home in mind already? You know what it looks like, right? It, are you guys kitchen people? Like I want, a, I want an awesome kitchen in my dream home. Yes, you guys relate to that. So you're moving into your dream home. By the way, Teamsy is your dream business home. And now you're complaining that you have to unpack the dishes and put away the pots and pans, right? How the heck are you gonna cook if everything's in boxes? Teams is the same way. You're going to just take a minute, get it set up, and you're going to be ready to rock and roll. Okay, let me show you how fun this is. So once you've done this, you don't have to save it or anything. It auto saves. You can just go back to the dashboard when you're ready. And you can go back anytime. If you don't finish in one sitting, you can go back to the team page at any time. Go, go up to this little menu and toggle rank mode again to keep going. Okay? All right. Now we're ready to rock a power hour. Here's our dashboard. A couple things I want to show you. This first box here, today's activities, these are the goals we set and set up. So my goal is 10 prospects, six customers, four distributors. You can see I've got zeros so far. I've done nothing. Okay. Down here in the middle is the power hour. This is where I work. Okay. The left side shows me my four lists, prospects, customers, 
distributors, and my follow-ups, okay? Each list only shows me five names at a time. That's on purpose. That's so I can't get um, overwhelmed and to keep me focused. Let's be honest. I, you'll be skipping people constantly if I showed you the whole list. I want you just to work the list as it comes up, okay? On the right side is where I log the work. All right, so let's do this. We're gonna work left to right, starting with prospects. I'm gonna start reaching out and connecting with people. Again, I'm in the make someone's day mindset. Trina's the first person on my list. Great. Now up here, I've got Facebook open in another window, okay? There's Facebook. So I'm ready to send messages. I'm gonna, I typically use Facebook Messenger to communicate with people because it has the highest response rate. Second best would be a text message. Make sense? Okay. So I'm gonna connect with Trina. This is where a lot of people get stuck. What the heck do I say? How many of you guys get stuck right there? And then somebody gave you this script that's like, dear Trina, since you're somebody that I trust, would you mind doing me a favor and giving me your opinion on this short video? How many of you guys have been given something like that? Yeah, how many of you felt like gagging when you tried to send that to somebody? Okay, instead, we're just going to connect okay so i'm going to go into this box right here where it says scripts and i'm going to click that to get some ideas i put a few in here that i've used thousands of times that work great okay to start the conversation i'm going to grab a facebook version boom here's one connect number one hi jane just stopping by to say hello how are you i hope your day is awesome okay copy the script now what I'll do is I'll just come back in here and I'm gonna paste it right inside here so that I can edit it and make it right. Like the name's not right, so let's put the name right, okay? I wanna put a smiley face emoticon on there. You know, just gonna customize this the way I want to. Here's a smiley face, great. Now I've got it just the way I want it, so I'm gonna actually send her this message. Now, I used to just do this editing right in Facebook, but occasionally I would send it before I changed the name. So somebody told me, do it in TMZ, and that'll never happen. I thought that was a great idea. So I've copied that. Now watch what happens. I have to go to Facebook to send a message. Facebook doesn't allow anybody to send messages on its behalf because they're working on ruling the world, and so far they're winning. So there she is. I'm going to look her up. Okay. I send her a message. Boom. Done. See how easy that was? Message is sent. Now I'm gonna go back to Teams and finish logging it. That was a Facebook message, and I'm gonna click the big blue log connect button, and now it's tracked. Done, Teams, you told me who to connect with, what to say, and now it's tracked. And guess what? She's automatically on my list to come up next month, even if she doesn't respond to me. Okay, pretty cool, I don't have to do anything. Next person on my list is Jay, Jay Lisa Swain. I'm gonna do the same thing, I'll even use the same script to change the name. Great, there she is, boom, ready to go. Now I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go send it. Do you guys see how fast, it can, how fast I could go down my 10? Here she is, Jay Lisa Swain. I send her this message all day because she works for Teensy and she's used to getting it at all hours of the day. Great, boom, send it to her, God bless her. If you guys have ever worked with her, she's our director of customer experience. Okay, now that's ready to go. Now I'm gonna log this. Log connect, boom. Now I'm on Jamie, she's the next person on my list. I've got two done. See how fast that is? Do you see how I could do 10 in less than 10 minutes? For sure. There's other scripts there, there that you could grab, but you just grab one and go, okay? And typically I might use the same one all the way down just to be fast and efficient. Here's the thing, I'm not scripting your conversation, I'm just helping you start one, okay? When they respond, have a conversation with them. Next, when I'm done with my 10 prospects, I'll toggle over to my customers list. I'll start connecting with them. Again, I might go to scripts to get started. We've got some great uh, customer scripts, right? Here's one. Hi, John, how are you enjoying the products? Send me an update. Let me know how I can be of help. Great. So I'll send this one to Ulrika. Do you guys see how easy this is? Come on. Ulrika, how are you enjoying your tower garden? Don't leave it as the products, okay, in parentheses. Go ahead and put what they actually are using in there. Just a little tip. <laughs> and change the name. 
Okay, one other pro tip on this is use their name, not like, hey girl, or hey pal. Use their actual name, personalize it. Okay, that's important for them, but also it's important for Facebook. So it doesn't look like you're just sending like a generic message. Okay, so look, I'll do the same thing. I'll go to, team, I'll go to Facebook, I'll send the message, right? And I'll log it here. You do the same thing with your customers. Go down your list, boom, 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 until you've hit your goal. This is really important. How am I doing on time? I've been using a lot of time. You gotta be, how many of you wish you were in better touch with customers? Anyone? The honest people. You need to understand this. You need to be in regular contact with your customers for three reasons. The first one is the same reason why you wished you were in better contact because it's just the right thing to do as a business owner. You need to be in, you need to serve, take, serve your customers, right? But the second reason is this. If you're in regular contact with customers, they will order more products period. Not, I'm not saying like calling them up and asking them if they want to order more. I'm just saying just being in touch, just checking in on them, they will order more, right? As you check in, as, as they see their, your level of care, they're going to ask you, well, what about this? What about this? Or I saw you post about that. Should I be getting that? Right? And what about my mom? You know, my mom is elderly and she's not doing too well. Do you think these products would help her? Yes. Just a little side note, um, if you think, if you have customers, if you have customers who you think um, are benefiting from your products and they have parents, your goal should be getting their parents on the products. They're not getting anything good. Our, elder, our, our elderly people right now are not eating well. They're eating packaged foods and they're being fed pharmaceuticals, right? How many of you guys are on a mission to change lives? I'm just saying, if you hadn't thought that already, you need to be on a plan to ask your customers, can we get some of this to your mom? Can we get some of this to your dad? I just doubled your business. You're welcome. And you help some people too. Here's the thing, guys. You gotta be in touch. If you're in touch, they'll order more. If they're on a monthly auto reorder, they'll stay longer. It will help your whole team volume. Will go. Get your whole team into Teamsy for 30 days and watch the volume increase. It's pretty amazing. Why? Not because Teamsy, well, Teamsy is awesome, but just because it helps people stay in touch with their customers. The third reason is this. How many of you would like new customers? How many of you right now would, if we could, if, if I could stop the call right now and you could go get a new customer, wouldn't that be great? Okay. Where do you go for new customers? Where do you guys typically look for those? What's the best place to get a new customer? Anyone know the answer to this one? Current customer. The best place to find a new customer is a current customer. That is true in your business. That is true in every business in the world. What, how are we wired? If we like something, what do we do? We talk about it. Your customers, how many of you guys have at least one customer who's getting good results and loves the products? Okay, you have, that one customer represents a limitless pipeline of new business. Isn't that crazy? It's like having a seed to a fruit tree because they're already talking about it. They already have people ready to buy right now. I guarantee it. Your best customers already have friends and family ready to buy right now. You need to be in touch with them and be getting introduced to the people they're talking to or they'll end up buying it from somebody else, which happens all the time. Juice Plus, great. I can Google that, boom, it's ordered, right? got to be in touch with them, you guys. Um, I think it's 88% of all purchases in North America, this one includes Canada, okay? 88% 80 of all purchases in North America are done by personal recommendation from a friend or family member. Doesn't matter how much internet research and everything we do, we still need somebody we know to recommend it to us. And that's happening with your customers. So be in touch with them. Make sense? Team is going to make it easy. You can get in there and get it done. Stay in touch. Don't be weird or creepy. You're just going to be there asking them, is there anything I can do to make your day today? I was thinking about you today. Next, your distributors. It's called Teamsy, so you can stay in touch with your team. Having a Facebook page, having Zoom calls is great, but the personal one-on-one -on -one relationship is what people need. If you guys do any reading on social science and the workplace, you'll see that income has no relationship to productivity. People think that if you give somebody a raise or pay them more, they'll do a better job. 
it's not true. It's never been, never once been shown to be true. People will do a better job and stay longer if two things happen. They get status, which you guys do, right, with ranking and all that stuff, and personal connection and relationship. So if you want your people to succeed, yes, you want to help them make money. But more than anything, you want to help them feel that connection. Make sense? That's why Teams is going to help you do it and be so organized. You'll never forget anybody. They're just going to come up. You're going to send them a message. Hey, girl, I was thinking about you today. What are you doing? How's everything going? Is there anything I can do to help? Okay. And here's the thing that's amazing about that is that people will respond with something so easy to answer. Oh, you, so funny because somebody just sent me, I asked, this was a conversation I was having with somebody and they asked me this, how should I answer it? And you're just like, you've answered that question 6,000 times. Here you go. Here's how I'd answer it. Make sense? Okay. Prospects, customers, distributors. Our goal was 20, 15 minutes work once you're cranking and using scripts. You guys see how quick you could do that? You send those messages out. Now people will start responding. Don't answer the incoming messages yet until you're done with your power hour, okay? You can answer all those afterwards. But first we wanna get all the messages out, all the seeds planted. Now the next are the follow-ups. Last list is the follow-ups. Now when you get here, there won't be anybody on it. You have to put people on the follow-ups list. You don't need to put everybody on the follow-ups list because people will come back on Teamsy automatically based on their number rank, their star rank. Follow-ups is for people who are interested in the business that you've sent an invite to and that you're now following up on. Make sense? This is the pipeline of yeses that you've uncovered as you've been having conversations. So how does it work? Let me just give you an example. I messaged Trina. How are you? Great. She says, uh, we're great. Thanks. This came up today in, in boot camp, in the, in the new boot camp. I'm great, thanks. And then they're like, now what do I say? Okay, well, and then I might say something like, awesome, well, what have you been up to? Send me an update. Mm -hmm. And so she does, she sends me the update. She unpacks her summer, which is incredibly busy, wow. And so I'm like, wow, that's cool. So now we're having a conversation and I'm asking questions and I'm learning about what she's been up to and what I'm trying to do in the conversation. How many of you guys think I'm trying to figure, find an opportunity to sell my business to her? What I'm trying to do in the, in the conversation is find a way to help her. I'm listening for wants and needs. I'm listening for pain points. Usually I'll be even be taking notes. We might be messaging back and forth. If the messaging back and forth gets, gets uh, exciting, then I'll say, why don't we jump on a quick call and catch up? Or why don't we jump on a Zoom? So as we're talking, I might even be taking notes, listening for pain points, trying to figure out how I can help her. I'm thinking about what do I know and who do I know? that can help her. What do I know and who do I know that can help her? It may have nothing to do with my business. My goal is the relationship. By the way, this is so fulfilling. It's so fulfilling. Do you guys know, that, you guys have probably experienced this, but when you help other people, it helps you more than anything, doesn't it? Yeah, and by the way, this creates a lot of business too, because you're helping people building trust. So that's my goal is, so as I'm talking to her, I'm listening, maybe she, she uh, needs, you know, her dentist moved away, she needs a new dentist that does kids, that she, you know, for her kids, that's gentle, and I know a great one, I'm gonna, I know a great one, I'm gonna text you over his contact information right now, boom, that's done, great, she's, oh, that, oh, that was cool. She's got something valuable out of this conversation. As we're talking, you know, as we're catching up with her and I'm being interested in her, at some point, the law of reciprocation means that she's gonna ask me, what about you guys, what are you up to? And what am I gonna tell her? I'm going to tell her what I do and why I'm passionate about it. Oh, well, I don't know if you know this, Trina, but um, I left my job three years ago now. And um, now I have my own business and it's been amazing. Oh, really, what's your business? It's Juice Plus. Really? And you support the whole family on that? Yeah, it's been amazing. And the best part about it is, is that I get to help people all day long. People getting off their medication, people who are beating terminal illnesses when the doctors had no hope, suddenly now nutrition is helping their bodies heal themselves. You know, I'm gonna share my passion, tell her what I'm doing. She's, wow, that's, that's really cool, Eric, that's awesome. Do you guys see how I'm doing this? And, I'll, and, I'll, and, and if she's really interested and in, in encouraging, which a lot of times they will be, I'll say, well, if you're ever interested in learning more about it, I'd be happy to send you some information. And you know, this is like a question that is something where I'm measuring motivation. She says, um, 
I think I would like to learn more about it. It sounds awesome. Great. Now I'm going to invite her to something. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? Um, if she said, I'll let you know if I ever do, I'd say, great, no big deal. I've let her know what I do, that I'm passionate about it. It's great to our first conversation and it will get better each time we talk. But if she's like, yeah, I would like more information. I'm going to say, okay, great. Trina, listen, it's perfect timing. Actually, my team's doing a virtual event tonight online. You can learn all about the business opportunity. You'll hear some people tell their stories. It's going to be really insp inspiring. Um, and it's a great opportunity for you from home to learn about it. If you're interested in that, I'll send you the link. She says, yeah, send that over. That'd be great. Perfect. So I'm going to email you that link right now. It starts at seven o'clock. It's great. And then um, what I can do, Trina, is connect with you tomorrow and see if you have any questions. She says, okay, Eric, that'd be great. That's just an example of an invite. Does that make sense to you guys? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to log this in Teamsy. So I'm going to look Trina up in the, in the lookup bar at the top because she's no longer on my dashboard. Okay. I've got to spell the name, right? That's step one. And um, that brings me to her full contact record. I'm going to click the big blue connect box, to open up that connect box, just like on the dashboard. Now this time I'm going to log an invite. See where it says invite on the bottom left. I'm going to take this off connect and I'm going to put it on invite. Let's call it a uh, event. Okay. We'll call it event. Maybe it's business opportunity, meeting, whichever one fits, right? Right. And I'm going to put virtual, whatever notes, virtual event. Great. I'll send an email to her. Great. Perfect. This is ready to log that I've now invited her to learn more about the business and to come to this event. Now, before I log this by clicking the log connect button, I need to set a follow-up. This is how I put her on my follow-ups list. Otherwise she won't come up for 30 days. I told her I'd follow up when tomorrow, right? So tomorrow. Now when I log that connect, the follow-up is set. If I go to my dashboard and look on my follow-ups list, there she is due tomorrow. Okay, great. Does that make sense? She can't fall through the cracks now. So now I've done it, boom, I've sent the invite, and now I'm gonna follow up with her tomorrow. Now this is the important part, the fortunes in the follow-up. Have you guys heard that before? <laughs> yeah, have you guys ever heard this stat? 80% of all sales happens between the seventh and the 10th follow-up. How many of you guys just died a little bit when I said that? 80% of all sales is between the seventh and 10th follow-up. How many of you guys follow up seven to 10 times? Anyone? Trina, you're, you don't count because you've been in boot camp now three months. You've probably been doing it a bit longer than that. Here's the thing. How many of you guys, even, uh, even though I told you 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up, if I left the call right now, you're like, I'm not doing that. How many of you guys just feel that way? because you're worried about being annoying, right? How many of you, that's it. Like you don't wanna be annoying. Follow up, follow up, be that person. Here's the thing I want you to know. I'm gonna teach you right now how to do it without being annoying, okay? So you, people will thank you profusely for doing it. How many of you wanna learn that? I'll teach you right now. But you have to have a mindset shift. When I asked how many of you are on a mission to help people and change lives, a bunch of you raised your hands. How many of you guys, that's your thing? You wanna help lives, change lives, you're on a mission. Anybody just want to make money? That's it. Well, you guys are honest at least. But, so look, I want you to know this. You can't change anyone's life if they don't buy the product. True? At least not with your Juice Plus business. And if 80% of them won't buy until you followed up seven to 10 times, what does that mean? If you want to change lives, you only have one thing available to you, your follow-up. That's it. This is why I say, say this all the time. You can write this down, put it somewhere where you can see it. Following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. Failing to follow up on the flip side of that means I don't care enough about you. Sorry. And it's harsh, but most people will follow up two or three times and give up on somebody. And they'll make up a reason in their mind why they didn't respond that will justify the fact that they gave up on them. And that's what it is. Not following up anymore is giving up on somebody, you guys. Now, I'm gonna teach you how to do it without being annoying. You ready? There's two principles, get these down. 
I want you to know that I'm going to show you how to do this in Teamsy. It's so easy. I've even put 10 follow-up scripts in order. They're numbered one through 10. You really can't screw it up. If you just use my follow-up scripts, you can follow up 10 times without thinking. And my follow-up scripts follow these two principles, which will never make you annoying. The first principle is this, never ask somebody to do anything in your follow-up. Don't give them any homework whatsoever. Don't ask them to call you back. That's the worst. That's probably the worst one. Don't ask them to message you back. Don't ask them to respond. Don't ask them to purchase. Don't ask them to join your group or RSVP for your event or anything. Okay? If you had a good conversation and you invited them to something, they know what they're interested in. Okay? So don't ask them to do anything. That's annoying. Okay? Number two, when you send your, your follow-up, it needs to be in like a text format. It can't be a voicemail or a voice message. They need to be able to read this thing on, as a notification on the lock screen of their phone. So it has to be short too, short enough that they can see it as a notification and get the whole message. Why? How many of you guys do this? If you're, not, if you're too busy right now to, to respond to somebody, you don't actually open the message because you don't want them to see that you've opened it. You guys do that? Come on, be honest. You guys don't do that? Oh, well, some of you do. Don't make them open the message because they're not going to respond right now. And many of them are uncomfortable opening it because they don't want you to see that little icon that says she read it when they're not going to respond right now. So you want it short. Your goal is to be seen, is to have it be seen. So if you can do it on the lock screen as a, as a like this, look, wait, hold on, turn it on. Look at, I got all of my little notifications. Your follow-up should be one of those that can be read, okay? That will make you not annoying. Trust me, follow those two, those two rules and you won't be annoying. What will happen, and if, if I had an hour, I would give you guys a deep training on the follow-up philosophy. We just need to know this is the way our brains work, our subconscious minds. People will not respond typically to the first five or six follow-ups. Most people will not respond at all. Even if they're excited, even if they have a lot of respect and affection for you. They're just not going to respond. They're busy. Things are happening and their subconscious mind is deflecting it from them to protect them from scary change. Okay. Your goal is to be present, to make their day, to let them know you support them and that you're loving them through the process. That's it to be present for them. And when they get to that point, usually around six, seven, eight follow-ups where they'll respond, you've shown your consistency through the process. Make sense? It works like a charm. Let me show you really quick. By the way, it seems like everybody who's a decent builder in this business takes a long time. It takes a long time, a lot of follow-ups. Okay, so here's how we do it. I come to my follow-ups. There's Trina, she's due, I'm gonna do my follow-up. I'll go to my scripts. I'm gonna get follow-up number one. There it is, follow-up number one. Hi Jane, just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Boom. I'm gonna send that to Trina. Same way, grabbed it, I'm gonna change the name. Okay, ready to go. Jump over to Facebook, we'll send it. My cousin Trina. Boom, bum, done. Sent, follow up, done. Now I'm gonna to go to Teamsy and log it. Now this is really important. Make sure you set a new follow-up so that she stays on the follow-ups list. Let's say I'm gonna follow up in two days now. So I've got it set, log the connect. Make sure you always set the next follow-up. Now my next one's due on Friday. When I get to my power hour on Friday, after I've done all my prospects, customers, and distributors, I'm gonna start working my follow-ups list. When I get to Trina, I may not remember what I sent her last. Does that ever happen? I'll go to activity and look at my last message. Okay, great. I send her follow-up number one, go back to connect. Scripts, follow-up number two, okay? Just make sure you got my message, checking to see if you have any questions. Follow-up number three, a couple days later, I'm excited about the goals we discussed, can't wait to get started. Number four, hey, just staying in touch so I can help you achieve your goals. Number five, I hope you're doing well, I'm here when you're ready. Number six, okay? This is the one I usually would get a response to. It's a little longer. I know you were excited about getting started and I promised to be here to help you along the way. Do you have any questions for me? This is reiterating. This little one here, number six, reiterates their goals that they told you 
that they, their heartfelt goals and that you're keeping your word as a friend. You said you'd be here for them and you are. Make sense? And most people will be surprised that you're still there for them after six follow-ups. Just keep going. Just keep going. Each day you come down your list. So this is the way your power hour works, you guys. You do your prospects, your customers, distributors. Send those messages out. Start new conversations. Then you get to your follow-ups list and you just send the next follow-up. Go down the list. Where are they at the process? Send them the next follow-up. Follow-up with them. Just keep following up with them. Keep them on your follow-ups list pretty much forever <laughs> until they convert. Now, what happens when I follow up 10 times and Trina still doesn't convert? then I can do a couple things. I can take her off my follow-ups list and just let her go back into my Teensy flow. 30 days, I'll connect with her automatically and I'll just start over. I'll say, hey, Trina, I saw you cross my Facebook feed. Or, hey, Trina, it's been a while. How are you? What are you up to? And I'll just start from scratch. A lot of times it just reinitiates that follow-up conversation. But let's say she converts. How do I move her over to my team in the system? So what I'm gonna do is, we'll jump over to her record again. I'm gonna log the sale by clicking sale. I'm just gonna put application fee so I know she signed up as a distributor. Okay, I'm gonna save that. And I'll take her member type from prospect over to distributor just by clicking on it and then personally sponsored. So now I've put her now over on my team list. She's on my distributor list. She won't be on my prospects list anymore, but I'll continue connecting with her periodically and staying in touch with her. She's just gonna show up over here on this list. Make sense? That's how you crush a power hour in Teamsy. Guys, it doesn't take that much time. But imagine what will happen in your business if you did 15 or 20, um, started 15 or 20 conversations a day, five days a week. And typically about half the people will respond. So in my scenario, it's 50, 50 people I'm talking to in a week. Some of, those, some of those conversations will fizzle out quickly. Some will be a great conversation where I'm learning and deepening that relationship. Either way, they all come back up in a couple of months and I'll continue working those relationships. Does that make sense? The concept of going through your warm market is a lie. You can't go through your warm market. Well, you could if you burned all your bridges with the old school approach of focusing on yourself instead of them, right? Asking somebody who if they're interested in something they don't even know about yet is because you're trying to help yourself, not them. Make sense? You can't solve a problem for somebody they don't have yet. You have to figure out what they need, where they need help. So that's the concept. Do you guys have questions? If you have questions so far, I know there's, I know I only showed you like this much at Teamsy, but that's the important stuff. Go ahead and unmute your microphones. If you have a question, ask away. I'd be happy to answer a few questions. We have a little bit more time. It was, this, it was just that good. Okay. It really was. <laughs> okay. uh, it's Trina, it's the other Trina. I don't know how to take my picture off for my camera. Hi, Trina. Hi. Oh, there you are. Um, yeah, I'm here. Uh, so my question is, so I've been using Teensy for about, I did your free trial, and um, I've been doing it for the last month or maybe, maybe a month and a half, actually. But I find it's hard. Like, I'm having the conversations, and sometimes it's like, holy man, how do I keep up with all these conversations? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're general, like, how are you doing? You know, how are the kids? What kind of activities? You know, that type of stuff. But sometimes it's hard to take it to that next level to find out that's where I'm getting stuck when taking it to that next level to find out how I can offer them, um, you know, some, something, find what, what, what their need is to offer them to an event or something. Okay. Question for you, Trina. Um, when you're having a conversation with them, are you telling them what you do? No, because I'm not even mentioning initially. I'm, I'm not even mentioning the business. So I'm using your scripts. Yep. Um, you know, sometimes they're like, well, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, you know, busy with the kids, busy with work, really having fun with my, my part-time business, not mentioning anything about Juice Plus. And then, and then sometimes they, they're like, oh, what business? And I'm like, oh, it's like Juice Plus. Have you heard of it? And then it's like done. So, um, so sometimes I, I feel like I'm getting hung up on that and just to take it to that next level. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing is don't be afraid to, don't be afraid to tell them about your juice plus business. Um, and don't be surprised if they're not interested in learning more about that right now in the first conversation. Keep in mind that most people have had a bad experience already. Some of them might be from you. Some of you guys might've used some of those approaches and burned some bridges. 
Um, but they've had a bad experience with other people following these tactics that were selfish. And it makes people feel yucky, right? It makes people feel like they're someone trying to take advantage of them. So they've already had this experience. Their response to you is based a lot of times on that past experience. But I don't want you to be afraid to share your business. You need to figure out what your story is. Why are you passionate about it? You know, what is it you love about it? Is it that you love helping people get healthy? Is it that you love helping um, people, you know, I have a guy in my boot camp right now. He's Juice Plus. He was in my boot camp three months. Two months in, I had no idea his story. He, he, we actually got on a phone call and he told me that he had uh, stage four cancer and it was like the battle of his life. And um, the doctors basically told him, get ready to die. So he did Juice Plus and fixed his nutrition and he went into remission. I said, why do I not know the story? He goes, I don't know. I just feel weird telling people the story. I feel like I go, that is the whole point of your business. Mm -hmm. I need to know your story. You're, you're not selling me Juice Plus when you tell me that story. You're telling me your story. And you're explaining to me why you're so passionate about helping people. Because you almost died yourself. And now you realize that you have the answer. So why are you passionate about it? What is your mission? You know, and so um, some of you guys might be passionate about it because, um, because it takes the worry of financial stress away, you know? So you need to share that stuff. When they say, well, we're doing great, Trina, how about you? What are you doing? You say, oh my gosh, um, it's, I'm doing so amazing. At, you know, um, I full-time help people every day get healthy. What, what are you doing? You know, um, we're doing great. We just got back from a Caribbean cruise. The best part was it was free. What, how is that free? Mm -hmm. right? These are things that I shared. Like when you win that free vacation, you know, we just had a vacation. It was free. How is that free? Oh, well I do juice plus and I, and helped enough people that they gave me a free vacation. How cool is that? Wow. I want a free vacation. Do, do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's not like, um, you need every conversation as the conversation's leaving. Like if the conversation is not headed towards an invite, you can tell. It's nice and it's cordial. You need to leave the conversation with that. Yeah. So if it's like, um, she says, you know, hey, it was great talking to you, Trina. You say, you know, it was great talking to you too. By the way, if you know anybody who needs help with their health or nutrition, please, let, please know I'd be happy to take care of them for you. Just connect me and I'll get them more information. Right? So you leave them with that, like, your passion again, just leave it. They, and they'll say something like, I sure will. Okay. Take care. And the thing is, is that's fine. You've planted a seed in their mind. Okay. You're going to plant seeds all day long and you're going to feel like they went nowhere. You'll be surprised when down the road, as you're consistent, they start to see you. This is your goal. Your goal is not necessarily to get them all to buy. Your goal is to become the expert on this topic. And so then when they're talking to their cousin, Mabel, who, who's sick, they're going to go, you should talk to Trina. You know, she helps people with this all day long. I'm going to connect you guys. Does that make sense? Yes. And then yeah. some people will go, I need help with that. Well, you know, sometimes I would say, um, if you know anybody, or maybe even yourself, who needs more information, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. And then people would go, ah, ha, 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 I need, well, you know, like I did beach body. So people would go, ha, 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 I need a beach body. Like, well, who do you think you're talking to? This is what I do is I help people get that. What are your goals? Okay. So again, and always, I mean, I'm sure you guys, Trina, I'm sure you teach these guys this. I'm looking at Johnson over in the corner, but always go to goals. What are your goals? What do you want to achieve? What kind of health do you want? Maybe I can help you with it. Maybe not. I don't know. What is your goal? Of course you can help with it, but does, does that help you a little bit? So, yeah, it does. so have the conversations. Don't be salesy. That's good. That's mm -hmm. great. But you need to let them know what you're passionate about and why. Okay. It's whatever it is you align with. Is it the mission, their, your personal mission? Is it the mission of Juice Plus that you like? Is it the fact that you have freedom? Is it financial things that you like? You know, um, people used to ask me in the very beginning, 
do you make any money doing this? And I go, I, you know, I make some, I, I my mortgage is paid every month by it. And they'd be like, oh, your mortgage is paid. Now they know I live in San Diego. But they're like, oh, that's a decent amount of money. You know, cause you, I don't know, I'm sure Juice Plus is like other companies. You're not really supposed to tell them what income you make. Right. But you can say things like that. I got a free vacation or, you know, or we did this, we, we're going to Disney World with the family and it's paid for by my business. Um, so those are things you want to share with people. That's how you transition it. Even if it doesn't have a transition, you need to let, make sure they know what you do and why you're passionate about it. So should you do that? Like if it doesn't come up, like, you know, you're having those conversation and I use a lot of the, the, the same one that you do. Hi, um, thinking about you. Hope your day's amazing. You know, that sort of thing. And then you have the conversation and then it's really not going anywhere. So then I'm like, so, so then, um, you know, you'll try to finish it off and like, you know, keep in touch. And then after that, I'm thinking, okay, they'll come up in my follow-ups again. And then, you know, have that conversation again, see how they've been doing, what they've been up to, and then have those conversations again to open that door and to talk about the business or to talk about the product. Yeah. I mean, you, it'll take you months to get there that way. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm finding. It's like, holy man, I'm having lots of yeah. conversations, but. So, so when you're asking people about themselves, most people will say, well, how, what about you? How are you? And you're saying, oh, I've been busy with the kids or things like that. That was your opportunity. Yeah. Okay, that was your opportunity to tell them what you're doing. So take those opportunities. Okay. okay. Now, sometimes people won't open the door and it's okay to just go, you know, when you say send me an update and they send you, you know, whatever, they might not ask about you and you go, um, you know, like I told you guys my, my story earlier where I said, I don't know if you know this, but I left my job three years ago. Or I don't, you know, like people love getting tidbits of like big news. Or um, I don't know if I, I don't, I haven't seen you in a while. I don't know if you know that I lost 60 pounds, you know, and that lets you start telling your story a little bit. Um, I don't know if you know that I got really sick, but for a while there, I, I mean, I don't know your story. I'm just, these are things that are common to the people that do this business. Right. Right. Um, I don't know if you know that, um, I don't know. I mean, those are three big ones, right? I lost weight. I was sick. How many of you guys lost weight? How many of you were sick? How many of you left your job that you hated? A couple people. So there's three examples of things that you, that you can start that conversation with. That's not like, I'm juice plus distributor, but right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. And, and the other thing, Trina, is when you're talking to them and you're listening to them, you're listening for them to complain about their job. You're listening for them to complain about being overwhelmed at work. You're listening for them to complain about money. You're listening for them to complain about being exhausted because those are things, part of your story that you've already addressed with Juice Plus. Mm -hmm. So then in the conversation, you work that in. Well, you know, she was exhausted and now you're saying, you know, I, I totally relate to that. I used to feel exhausted all the time too. And recently my energy has been through the roof. Or I can relate to that. I used to hate my, my, my um, boss, it's not that he was a jerk. I just, he just never earned my respect. I'm telling you the truth now. This is me sharing my actual story. So I can relate to that. But luckily I got to say goodbye to him and I haven't had to report to anyone for three years. So you take your story, listen to what they're doing. This is how we talk anyway. If you weren't thinking about it, you would automatically do stuff like this. Right. But this is an opportunity for you to share your passion. And everybody on your list needs to know that you're passionate about helping people with this. Okay? And they should leave with what will happen if, if you're doing this right. Maybe not on the first time. Some people will, will be like, some people will be mean, some people were mean to me because whatever wounds they have in the past has nothing to do with what I did. But they, they were mean to me in the, at first. Some people were. But, um, most people would, would be very encouraging. Wow, that's awesome. Good for you. That's great. Which is a good emotion to leave the conversation with because now they're thinking, wow, he's doing something really great. And that's where you, when they say good for you, that's when you say, well, listen, if anybody that you know, uh, if you know any, if anybody you care about ever needs help with this stuff, you know, you, I want to help them. Connect me and I'll take care of them. 
and you leave them with that. And they're like, okay, yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? I give yeah. this example in boot camp. I said, if I was, if I was a, if I hadn't talked to you in ten years and I went to vet school and became a veterinarian, do you think I would hide that information from you? What are you up to today, Eric? I'm a veterinarian. I went to veterinarian school. I don't know if you know this about me, Trina, but I have a passion for animals. So I went to veterinarian school and now I get to help them all day. What would you say? Oh, well, I, I don't, I already have a vet. I don't want to talk to you about that. Click. No, you go, oh, that's cool. That's awesome. That's so great. I love animals too. And then, I, and then I've, then if I finish the conversation like this, uh, you know, Trina, I met the, I met the um, downtown animal hospital you know, on, on fifth street, if you ever need someone to take a look at your pets, you know, comes, just comes ask for me. I'd be happy to take care of them for you. You'd think that was awesome. Wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Thank you. I think yeah, I, I, think I think I over delivered on that question. Well, that's good. I drilled it right in us. Struggle with <laughs> <laughs> over delivery is a disease. And I have Sorry. It. And juice plus doesn't save, doesn't heal it. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? I answered like 10 probably with that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> the new people are like, what's happening? What's going on? Here's what I want you guys to do. Go get your 30 day free trial of TMZ. It's a no brainer. It's so easy to use. Go get your 30 day free trial. If you're tech averse and you're like uh, setting it up is a challenge, just hit the help button and ask for help. Okay. Get it started. Get your 30 day free trial. After the, after the 30 days, to continue using Teensy as a subscriber, it's $29.99 a month. Okay, that's US for you guys up in Canada, which is less than a commission on one basic sale. If you're doing the program, you're gonna make sales. It pays for itself. You write it off your taxes, okay? Um, I recommend that you get a success partner to do your 30-day trial with you. Okay, just pick somebody on the team, sideline, somebody that you like, somebody that wants to do it too. Hold each other accountable to actually doing the work. Help each other do your why statements. And then each day, take a screenshot of your dashboard when you finished and send it to your partner. It's huge. We do this in bootcamp and it's massive. It's massive. So um, that accountability will help you because let's be honest, you won't do it for yourself, but you'll do it for the approval of another person. Isn't that so crazy that we're like that? It's true. And the double flaming. If she's double flaming, which is, uh, you guys, <laughs> There's a team report that shows who's really active in Teamsy. And so you can get everybody on your team report, you know. So it's pretty cool. So does that help you guys? Get your 30-day free trial. Go in there and use it and abuse it. Have some fun. I'll send, Trina, I'll send you this recording um, probably in the morning. I'll send you the link so you can share it with the rest of the team. Um, if you guys want to come back and watch this again, I have a feeling the Q&A section is going to be the most popular because that's probably one of the most in-depth explanations I've done for transitioning to invite. So you guys got it free. I, I usually do trainings so that and make people pay for it. So that's a good one. Um, but hopefully that helps you. You should, you shouldn't be leading with the, with the sale, but you don't want to be afraid of letting people know what you do either. Okay. It's kind of a both and be proud of what you do. You guys actually change lives. Don't be ashamed of it. The more people who do this business by relationship marketing, the more we'll change the industry's reputation. This is the greatest thing that's ever happened to a, a free economy and a free people. Having the ability for people to go create income while helping others without any startup cost. Right? It's pretty crazy. When I started Teamsy, before we wrote the first line of code, I had to pay $6,000 to the attorney just to write up the paperwork. You know, this business, you can get in and get rocking with nothing. Everything's set up for you. The accounting, the billing, the shipping, everything is, I mean, what an amazing opportunity for so many millions of people to get, to become entrepreneurs. I love it. So don't let anybody make you feel bad about it. Be proud of it. Okay. Got to go. God bless you guys. Have a great, great. night. Thanks for having me, Trina. Hopefully Thank this you. was helpful. Yes, it was. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye guys. Yes.